What is up, everybody? My name is Josh Corporal. Welcome to another episode of Fire Builders Live. Uh, like always, streaming live from Key West, Florida. So welcome one and all to the porch. Today, I have very special guest, Shay Sparks. Shay Sparks on the line. Here we go, Shay. It's so great to have you on the show. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be connected to you and being able to like meet you in person too. So it was a great, great experience. That's right. Not every Fire Builders Live guest actually <laughs> comes down to Key West and we get to hang out. So, yeah, so I'm excited. I you said where you're at, so I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna be there. Let's let's grab let's, a drink." That's right. That's right. And that's how this whole thing started. Uh, and I can't wait to explain to everybody the connections here because there are there's a lot of overlap between uh, what we're doing, Fire Builders, and what you were doing with Fire Starters. So before we get into all of that, let me explain to everybody listening and watching at home what we do. What do we do here on this show? We stream live twice a week, Wednesdays, Fridays. We bring on amazing guests like Shay, and we take these big ideas, these big goals, dreams that you've got, and we break them down into small steps, things that you can do every single day to improve. Today is no different, my friends. Listen to this. I mean, basically, and you will see as we go through this episode, you know, when you need to get fired up, you talk to Shay Sparks. She is the CEO of Sparks of Fire International. She's the co-author of the Firestarters book project, which we're going to get into. She is also the host of the podcast, The Power of Investing in People. And she now works with veterans, small businesses to sharpen their communication skills, embrace resilience that they've got inside of them, and take the fear out of making tough decisions in life, in business, wherever it is that they are. And today we're going to be talking about the topic of co-authoring books because you know there are many ways to spread the word about your business, about what you do. And one of the best ways to do that, to solidify yourself as an expert, is to co-author your own book. What is co-authoring? Well, instead of essentially writing the entire book yourself, you pair up with different experts and you write everything together. And Shay has done this she knows what she's talking about. We're going to talk about it all today. So, Shay, it is so great to have you on the show. Welcome again to Fire Builders Live. Well, thank you for having me. And I had to go on mute. Hopefully, you can't hear the um, emergency test of the sirens. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> but don't worry about it. That's a live it. show, right? That's all don't, about the live. <laughs> that's right. The live is key. I mean, I've got roosters and iguanas and uh, people go. being arrested have been on the show. There was a a group that showed up one day and just started a hula hoop class, like right in the middle of the show. How does awesome. that Awesome. Who, who does that happen to? I don't know. Awesome. Uh, so I like to start these off, Shay, by asking, so where in the world are you? And what's a typical day like in your life these days? Oh, wow. That's a loaded question. So right now I'm in Kansas City in the middle of the country. And a typical day is usually uh, getting up, drink, get my tea going and journal. And then, uh, you know, check all the social media, maybe post something, emails, all of that, get text returned from the overnight emails, whatever. And then uh, get ready. Like I also, all the things that you mentioned, I also work in a salon or have a salon. So I get ready to go into that if I'm going in there that day. But Otherwise, I am literally on Zoom calls most of the day if I am uh, working from home. So it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> and yet, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I love all of the, the work that goes into both businesses, and I love to be connected to people. So the pandemic really helped me in that, uh, being able, everybody now is more acceptable to Zoom. Before people were like, what is that? I don't get, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so it's good to be here. Agreed. Agreed. It's like, it's totally changed the way that we communicate. Yeah. And, and I would imagine like the, you know, the, the kinds of conversations that you have with people on zoom, like, is it is easy to help people uh, in this online env environment as it was when you were doing it in person? Are you finding that it's easier, harder? How's it different? Oh, I believe it's all the same actually. And Truthfully, maybe even a little bit more uh, people. So as a coach, people, I think, are even more um, giving themselves permission and feeling safer 
to like share what's really going on because they have the safety of being in their home. They're not feeling the pressure of like, and I don't, I did never meet anybody in person, but I can only imagine uh, from someone who has met people in person on, you know, a therapist's couch or a coach's couch is that there's this freedom to be able to just go, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable. I've got my beverage, my whatever I'm drinking. And, uh, you know, you have no idea if I'm wearing pants or shorts or nothing <laughs> underneath. So I'm just chill. Um, so I think it just gives a, a freedom to be able to share. So that's been my experience. Do you have pants on right now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I do. <laughs> just checking, just checking, because it's a live show. You never know. You never know, you know? right? Yeah. But yeah, I totally, do you? I totally do you get have it. Pants on? I do have pants on. Oh, okay, actually, got it. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's uh it's just now starting to get to a point where it's starting to get really hot in Key yeah. West. So yeah. pretty soon, you know, I'm sure thinking maybe so. kilts might be the way to go. Mm, I'm not exactly go. sure. <laughs> Pants are just way too hot. Uh, but no, I totally hear you. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's interesting, like, the freedom and the comfort that you feel when you are in your own space. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny because, like, sometimes I actually almost feel the opposite personally because... I was somebody that loved to go out yes. and be in the world. Like, and it was kind of a reminder that the world was still happening and mm -hmm. outside of my little, my little boat bubble. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but also it's true. Like when you're talking about really personal things, you know, things that you're trying to work on with yourself, you don't want to be sitting in Starbucks where everybody can right. hear like right. you're, you're like, yeah, you know, I'm feeling depressed. And the person next to you is sipping their, their beverage, their coffee, and being like, right. oh, man, what the hell are they talking about? So right. I get it. I totally get it. Well, I'm, you know, I'm an extrovert as well. So, but when I started uh, for taking my business from, you know, not just have being in the salon all the time to being a virtual with co as a coaching clients, I really put it in a way so I could live wherever. And I did it all that way virtually because you know, like you and I have talked before, it's really about the having the freedom to, you know, get up, pack your bag and go wherever. As long as they have Wi-Fi, we can work. Right. And I feel like that is really one of the capabilities that, um, you know, this digital world has given us. And for the other people, for the person on the other end who is receiving the coaching, you know, instead of having to get in their car and they, you know, tear up while they're in the session and maybe get in their car and really full blown have a good cry or have a good, you know, rage fest or whatever it is that they're going through, whatever they're feeling, they can do that in their home. Right. So it's a much better option to do it that way. Yeah. That's such a cool concept. I never really thought of before, but yeah, I can, I can see that. I definitely can see that. I, uh, I'm curious too, for those that, you know, don't know who you are, they're being introduced to you for the first time, right? The name Shea Sparks obviously is cool and super memorable. Uh, what is it that got you, like, first, what fires you up? I mean, because yeah. it's built into your name. So what is it that's firing you up these days? Uh, I love it. I love that question. Huh, what's got me fired up these days is really about uh, guiding people to be passionate about their life, to tap into their emotional intelligence and be able to communicate just on a real effective uh, playing field with whoever it is they need to have that difficult conversation with. So that's what really fires me up, especially when, um, you know, someone comes back to me and it's like, oh my gosh, because we talked about, you know, I'm now able to um, talk differently to my my father or, you know, I've forgiven my mother or my child is now listening to me because I am taking, you know, what you, we've talked about in their coaching. I am now being able to parent my child differently and they're showing up differently in the world. It's like, yeah, yeah. That's what gets me fired up. Like you're making a difference in people's lives, you know, like the things that Absolutely. you're doing. It's not, a, it's not passively. They're not just taking it all in passively. They're actually putting it into action. Right, right, right. And, and you know, truthfully, that's in the nutshell, that's what fires me up is to make a positive impact in other people's lives. Well, 
is that then so I'm curious because you have all of these first you're a big traveler second you you know you have all of these experiences different people working with different people different mindsets different points of views yeah. and you you feel really comfortable with that and I would imagine that you know you got a lot of that experience working in the salons to be honest like <laughs> right yeah. because it's it's yeah. like a it's like a little it's like being a bartender you know people probably right. just come in there and want to talk about their problems right well i've always been that person even as a little kid i was that person that you know i'd be like at the grocery store and be like hey where's the bread and they tell me their life story <laughs> and i'm like uh, i just need to know where the bread is um but you know it's just i just naturally am who that who i am and i think i'm also you know come with life was a curiosity and have the ability to ask questions. I think I always have. And as a hairstylist, <clears throat> you know, that's really what got me thinking about um, transitioning into coaching was because um, about year I've done being a hairstylist for gosh, over 25 years. And at year 10, my shoulder was really starting to hurt. And I was like, okay, at some point I really have to figure out what's next for me because my shoulder will have to be replaced. I'm sure. And then I will possibly have to retire at that point. From what I understand, that's kind of the from the, from the the idea of like just basically holding your arms up like this. And yeah. Yeah. And the repetitive movement with your arm with your shoulders in the air. Yeah. And from what I hear from other stylists is that, you know, it's like once that shoulder tears, once that surgery is done, it's like you're done because the recovery is for our industry is anywhere from six months to a year. For most people, it'd be more like six months, six weeks to six months. And for us, it's, it's you know, much more because this is where all of our, <laughs> right up here is all of our muscles that we use uh, most of the time. So it's a lot. So I got to thinking about what I love about being in the salon. And I love being able to connect and have meaningful conversations with, with my clients, with people, period, right? And, um, you know, again, I think I've just been that person where people are comfortable with telling me things. I don't know. I don't do anything that I know of that is conscious to, to create that safe space for people. And yet I have also know that my dad always taught me that everyone puts their pants on one leg at a time and we're all the same underneath. Uh, and so I just really felt in all of the different areas that I work in from veterans to business owners to now um, actual um, enlisted in the military to, you know, ladies getting their hair done weekly. We're all the same. We all just want to be loved. We all just want to belong. We all just want to be heard and understood and have loving and meaningful relationships in our life. At the end of the day, that's how we all show up. So it's really about connecting into that. So, okay. So, I totally agree. Before, before I comment on that, coming going back to your shoulder in, uh, injury and like, yeah. I never even knew that that existed. You know, the the idea that um, all of the repetitive movement. But you're totally right. And and you taking the initiative to be like, all right, well, maybe it's not just the hairstyling that I that I get like kicks from. It's the fact. Yeah. It's the communication and the connections with people from all different walks of life. Yeah. And, uh, and that's actually why I think today's topic about co-author in books is so perfect because, yeah. because you're comfortable, you, you seem comfortable anyway, being in a situation where you have a lot of different inputs and you can, you can mm -hmm. weave them together into a single thread. And that's seemingly kind of what you're doing when you're co-authoring books like this. It, Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think? How did you even get started with all of that? Mm, uh, great question. So you're absolutely right. I feel like uh, thank you for the compliment because uh, that is a compliment that I am comfortable with with different uh, sets of of individuals. I have been in rooms. I have been in um, conferences where I'm the only person who looks like me. And, you know, I, I just feel like I set the intention to show up as loving and caring and really interested in interested in connecting, then that's really what it's about. It's not about me judging anyone else or even myself, or even let fear get in the way, and just really showing up of how I want to show up. So the co author book, um, actually, a couple of years ago, um, 
I was noticing some other people do co-author books and another coach friend and I had approached me and said, hey, why don't we do this together? And I was like, that's awesome. I love this idea. You know, we could do this, this and this. And I said, by the way, he's also written a book as well. And I and, and I had two beforehand. And I said, do you have a, a self-publishing company that you're working with? And he said, I do not. And I said, well, I do. And I, what, you know, if you're up for it, I would love to bring them on board. And he was like, absolutely. That would be amazing. Well, this is where fear could have taken over. So over the course of just a few months, the three of us sat down a couple of times and had a Zoom call, right? Because we all live in different areas of the country. And we had a Zoom call and was like hashing out details and stuff. And then one day I had a meeting set with my friend who was the um, other coach and he didn't show up. And just ghosted everybody. Uh, yeah. And he didn't show up. He didn't respond to calls. He didn't respond to any message you could possibly email, Instagram, Facebook, like nothing. And, uh, you know, there was a moment where I thought, OK, did he and the publisher go together and kick me out? So that's how the fear shows up how fear showed up for me. Right. And, um, I just decided that, you know, I just have to talk to the publisher because him and I, uh, the publishing company, we had also become friends and also really like had done a lot of, you know, mastermind calls together and bi other business together. And so I just called him and uh, we were talking. I'm like, Hey, so did you ever like move forward with that co-author book? And he was like, well, I was thought you guys cut me out. <laughs> Right. But when, think about and you, and you were like, but we reached out to you. Like, why would you get that impression? Did you ask him why? No, no, no. That wasn't the coach. He oh. literally still haven't talked to him. It's years later. I still no haven't way. talked to him. Yeah. Yeah. No, this was the publishing coach, the publishing uh, company that Got him it. and I have done other business together. And so him and I were talking like, so have you heard from it? Like, what's going on? Are you, did you guys cut me out? And they're like, he was like, oh, my gosh, I thought you cut me out. So it just goes to show that that's the story that fear will tell us, right? Like, oh, they're not responding, so they must have cut you, cut you out. And it was such a lie. And I'm so glad that the both of us, you know, really had courage to still connect with each other and, you know, figure it out. And so because he has a, a publishing company, this is what he does. He said, well, I'm going to run with it if you don't mind. I'm like, go for it. I, I'm like, I'm out. Like, I'm doing other things, so I'm fine. And uh, he's like, but I want you a part of it. And I said, okay. And that's when uh, Visionistas was born. And so there was me and, um, gosh, I don't even know, off the top of my head, 10 plus other women. And it's uh, women who buy the box. And the uh, it was just such a great experience. Then we launched that in January of 2020 um, in Houston. We do a book launch. It was amazing. And then, um, you know, COVID happens and, and, and I, and the salon was shut down for two months, which at the time that they would have said, you're going to be shut down for two months. I would have been like, got in my car and drove back to Florida, but <laughs> that's not what happened. Instead, that's it was, why it was so tough to deal with that. Right. Yeah, because they yeah. were just like, Hey, it'll, it'll just be a week. Then it'll right. be another week. It'll be another week. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they did two weeks. You at can time. drink, you can take a <laughs> sip. It's all right. <laughs> it's no problem. Uh, no, but you're right. Like had they just, had they from the very beginning said, look, we're not exactly sure what's going to happen. So conservatively, right. just take the next six months off. Right. Then right. imagine what you could have planned and gotten yes. done. You know? Yes. Yes. And I think, you know, that time really, one, gave me an opportunity. I would never in a million years ever taken time two months off from the salon. Never. Um, and every hairstylist I know says the exact same thing. They would never have done that. And in the week, the first week, I'm not going to lie, I was scared shitless. <laughs> and so I was like, ah, what's going on? What's going to happen? And then I was like, I move into acceptance and make the most of what's happening. And so, you know, I was getting on Facebook lives and doing lots of calls and just connecting with so many people just to say, hey, I'm here for you. And I was helping people at no charge just to like, you know, help them through this because you know, I can only imagine how other people's fears were showing up in the very beginning of this. And so then in week six of the eight weeks, um, 
my my had a, a, a call with my my self-publishing coat, my friend, right, who's in that world. And he's like, so have you, he's like, Shay, have you considered maybe facilitating your own co-author book and really like having people join you because you're so connected, you're constantly referring me people who want to write books. However, they're not where you are or what was when I wrote my book. I had my manuscript written when I was already looking for him. He said, most people just have an idea. He said, so with you, if you did um, a co facilitated this co-author book, they could take their idea into a chapter, you know, 2,000, 3,000 words and really like, you know, be able to, to be in with you. And I was like, huh, okay. It'll be called Firestarters. And, right. <laughs> like, it, it was just so, uh, I, like, instantaneously, I was like, it'll be called Firestarters. And the first one will be called How to Be a Spark of Hope in the Midst of Change. And I'm going to create a community and I'm going to add this. I'm going to add this perk and I'm going to do this and did it. And, uh, <laughs> and out it poured. And um, so, yeah, the first book is um, in a couple of weeks about to launch. So, but this is the, I am showing this for the first time ever. So this is oh, what it looks man. like. Look at that. Oh my God. So beautiful. And uh, the back has all the authors, co-authors pictures on it. And it kind of describes of what fire starters are. And really it's, uh, it's just been this absolute incredible amazing experience to really help people guide people to you know have their but write something off on their bucket list because well, yeah. yeah go ahead absolutely like like you know if if i was thinking about writing a book it would be extremely daunting especially if i've got yeah. you know four billion other things going on in my life but the idea of writing spending some time and really perfecting one good chapter around a centralized like nucleus of a, of a theme. Yeah. Uh, that's way more doable. I would imagine that, uh, that, that the response and the ability of people to actually follow through with what they said that they're going to do was so much higher. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's so amazing is that, you know, you have thoughts, right. At some point in your life, like, or maybe people have even told you like, oh, you should write a book. You have such a great story. You've overcome so much. And, you know, I believe that's why you and I do have podcasts, right? Because we're really about diving deep into people's stories. And when they share their story, it really inspires other people to do the same or, you know, to go out and 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 make a difference in the world. Yep. Uh, yeah. Right. And so I just knew that there must have been other people in this in this space that were like, I have a story to share and I am completely lost or overwhelmed by the process. Because when you think about it, books in itself are anywhere between 25,000 words and um, more, right? <laughs> and then to go through all the editing and then, you know, it, and the and, 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 right? There's so much. And it was just a, a, a blessing to really think about, again, going back to the well, we're all the same underneath and we're all experiencing, you know, our shutdown in a, in a way that maybe we can, you know, connect on that level instead of like focusing it on one target market, like Chicken Soup for the Soul, amazing series, right? Amazing series. And they're targeted to like nurses and teachers and things like that. And I was like, well, what if we talk about the theme? So we kind of get to the heart of the matter of, each person. I, okay. So before we get into it, cause I want to ask you a question about the book and then we can talk about like what you learned by putting all of this together. Cause I, it's, it's incredible the types of coordination that I'm sure you had to put together in order to co-author all of this. But let me put this up first. Lyndon said, uh, uh, congratulations, Shay. Like what an amazing way to take away mm -hmm. the intimidation and the fear of publishing. Just like you said, uh, that's, People just immediately go to to fear because yeah. it's a it's a daunting it's a really is like a heavy task, and yeah. and half the time, half the time ignorance is bliss. Like if you don't know how big of a task it really right. is, maybe you've got a better chance of starting it. But yeah. once, but you got to grind it out, and it mm. takes a while. And so I can imagine it's also kind of disheartening when you don't see a a clear light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, 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 because I had a different experience of having my transcript already written before it became a book, I can't imagine just working with someone and having to like uh, coach them through pulling out chapter after chapter after chapter and how one, how timely that would be, two, how uh, monetarily that would be, and and three, just really like exhausting that would be. And so, uh, and for me, it was really just, you know, accumulation of years of journaling that really prompted me to write my book in, in the first place. And so I feel like journaling is such a huge part of who I am. And it's such a an important part, I think, of our culture that it's underutilized. Yeah, I agree. Especially when you look back at old journals that you wrote yes. like 10, 15 years ago, and you say to yourself, man, thank God I wrote all of this down because I would have right. forgotten most of it. Right. You know? Right. Uh, and so, okay, so perfect segue, because I'm curious as to, you know, there's people out there that really do either want to write their own book, like mm -hmm. write a book and and bring a lot of folks together. So the idea of co-authoring is really attractive to them or simply just have a story to tell, but are not necessarily ready to write their whole own book. Maybe yeah. would like to participate in some type of co-author. So I'm curious, <laughs> based on all the stuff that you've learned about this whole process, you know, where is it that people can focus and start? Mm. Uh, and you know, one kind of helpful way that I like to, to frame this is like, you know, imagine an eight year old kid came up to you and asked you <laughs> about the whole co-authoring of a book and what that yeah. entails. And they've got a bunch of friends and stuff they'd like to include. Where would you have them start? Mm. Great question. Um, it's really about journaling. Oh, <laughs> there he is. There's Elvis. <laughs> I am. Elvis, Elvis agrees with the question. He wants to yes. know as well. Yeah. He's got it's... all of his rooster friends. He'll probably write his own book. I'm sure. <laughs> the Gypsy Chickens of Key West. Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's really about journaling. Um, and not just journaling your thoughts, like really digging deep into your own psyche and writing your feelings down. Um, because you can write your thoughts all day long. It's not until you really figure out, you know, tap into your heart. We have our, you know, we're always thinking intellectually. And sometimes some of us, including myself, was shut off from sharing feelings. Well, that is really where the story is, is in the feelings of how you felt when this happened. And then you did this. And now you feel this. Right. So it's really about diving into un uncovering is what I call it, uncovering those feelings, uncovering those. Maybe it was a thought because, as we know, thoughts uh, produce feelings, feelings produce action and then action gets you a result. So how that happens is my process is through journaling. and I highly recommend everyone else, you know, do it the same just or, you know, try it just to see you know, what that is that they might be uncovering. The first time I journaled, literally, and this was, I was in my 20s, I was like, I don't even know where to start. And this was in my adult life. Now, mind you, I had a journal growing up as a kid and hated it, hated it in, in school because somebody was telling me I had to do it, right? So of course I was like, gross. <laughs> <laughs> But now, but, you know, I'm in my 20s. I'm like, I miss that. I miss the journaling. And as the first time I sat down, I literally was like, I don't know what I'm going to write. What is this? And it was kind of what I call a brain dump. It was literally like getting everything out. And that first time uh, I just kept writing and I uncovered that I had had anxiety attacks most of my childhood and didn't even realize that that's what they were. How that like, just because of the, the, like what you ended up writing and the patterns that you saw in what you yes. wrote? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was writing about a circum certain uh, incident and it was then when I tapped into, well, how did I feel in that moment? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what an anxiety attack is. Wow. Like it never had crossed. Well, again, you know, I'm, I'm pre 
uh, <laughs> labels of ADHD and anxiety and things like that, right? So as a kid, I never understood that's what was happening with me. But now as an adult looking back, I was like, wow, that's really huge to understand now because, you know, th that's one of the things where fear shows up, that story gets going. We say all these awful things to ourselves, or at least I do. And it was like, okay, that was anxiety showing up, not, it wasn't true. <laughs> None of that things I was saying to myself was true. And I would not have been able to realize that or uncover that had I not started journaling. It's such a process of self-discovery, you know, especially yes. for a curious person that loves to travel, right? Yes. Like, it's almost like taking a trip, but, but discovering something new about yourself, you know? Uh, Agreed. Totally and, agree. Uh, and by the way, let me put this up for so first of yes. all, like while you were talking, old so Scott ah. Mason in the house. Hello there, Scott. Right. He hey, says Scott. to uh, tell Elvis hello, which <laughs> I will. But then he also added here that uh, the journaling is incredible. And it's yes. it's one of those things where I think that if you've never done it before, mm -hmm. um, that a good place to start with that is just to do that, um, I forget what they call it, what do they call it, like uh, essentially just conscious stream writing, you know, just just yes. writing and continuing to write, don't stop your hand and just let it all kind of flow out. And yep. once you get all of like the, the crap out of your head right at the very beginning, then you can really start to tap into some good, authentic, like well-articulated feelings and stuff. It's incredible, like it, it really is cool. Yeah, you call it conscious streaming. I call it brain dump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know? But yeah. I think the the important part of it is that you like it doesn't matter what you write, like because because right. most of the times like no one's really going to read it, so you don't have to right. write to be presentable. No, um, you just have to write just just to write and not judge yourself in the moment. You Agreed. know, like the types of words that you're using and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and well, no, yeah, spelling doesn't matter. Yeah, Who spelling cares? doesn't matter. Yeah, I uh. I'm a horrible speller. I don't know. Are you are you a good speller? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it depends. Sometimes I though I will say it depends on the mood. I get in a in a in a in a flow and I can't read my own handwriting sometimes. So you, it just kind of depends. You write in print or cursive? I do cursive. Yeah. That's a yeah. lost that's that's becoming a lost art show. I know. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, if I want uh to to hide a message, right? For the millennials, I'll write in cursive. <laughs> right? Yeah, and you know, the, I was just, we were just having this conversation about um, about graphic design using script fonts. And the fact is, is that a lot of script fonts, um, people are finding yes. them very hard to read, even if they're very legible, because they just don't, they never learned really cursive. Mm, very true, yeah. Yeah, craziness. Okay, so uh, coming back, what, in your opinion, so now that, if it really is journaling, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, but let's dive into it a little bit more. In your experience, like what kind of things start to happen to you? Let's say, mm. for instance, hypothetically, that you uh, started to journal every morning while you were having your coffee, you know, for mm -hmm. 20 minutes, um, got your feelings out, got, you know, started to discover things about yourself. What happens to you throughout that 30 days in mm. your experience? Yeah, you shift, right? So um, you can, that's the great thing about uh, journaling. T well, two things about journaling, I'll say this, is one, if you do it really like old school with paper and a writing utensil, pen, paper, uh, pen, pencil, crayon, whatever, <laughs> marker, um, there is something that happens with your brain as it automatically goes down your arm, onto your hand, onto the paper. It's like a release. Um, so there is something therapeutic about it, number one. Number two, the great thing about going back and looking at a journal, say 30 days ago is where you started, and now to see where you are now is, is crucial to really go, wow, look at all I've come through. And for me, that's really about acknowledging how resilient we are. So when the next, um, thing happens, the next unfortunate circumstance comes to, into play, you can say, well, I had uh, overcome this. I have tools or I have the strength at least, or courage at least at one point that I know that I can also overcome this. So for me, it's really about that um, 
oh, what I want to call it, where you have evidence, building up the evidence of your resilience. That's what I want to call it. I like that. I like that. And you're right. It's so important to have that evidence yeah. as like a, it's almost like a little arsenal, you know, yes. of, of stuff so that you, so that you do have the confidence to tackle that next challenge, even though you feel like it's scaring you shitless kind of thing. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, and that kind of thing, you're right. Like it's so, a lot of that evidence, it doesn't necessarily have to be something gigantic. Like, um, yeah. um, you know, it does help if it's if it's very important and it kind of solidifies something. Like for me, for instance, when I was 26, I did this thing, this like accomplishment as a captain and I've never forgotten it. And it was like super high pressure and like ended up getting through it. And that in my mind is like one of the most proud moments. But on the mm. other side of that, small little daily things yes. end up adding up that can outweigh the big one thing. Absolutely. And that's where I think that you're going with it. And, you know, to look at the pain and the confusion and really um, my journals, uh, I'm a very spiritual person. So my journals really became to me like a thank you letter to God. And uh, I was constantly praying for him and really just, you know, heal him, take care of him because he was extremely, um, he had his own issues, very toxic, alcoholic. And, you know, he was abusive mentally, physically, anything you can imagine. And he was, you know, I, I was praying for him, for his his he, his healing. And it, during that process, and I can't even really tell you how long time had gone by, but I was journaling about that and really tapping into how I wanted to help him when finally I just got this, you know, whether it was God's voice and nudge or something in my spirit or whatever said, what is it that I want? You know, what about healing for me? You know, what if I prayed for me? What does that look like? And so then I started to dream like, OK, so when I get out of this relationship, what do I want my life to look like? And I started, I'll never forget this article I read, and it was literally like a paragraph in this humongous uh, magazine, but it was a paragraph. And it said, and when you write your goals, instead of saying, I will lose, let's say 10 pounds in 30 days or whatever the goal is, instead of saying, I will, you use, I am. So you create, I am statements as if it already happened. And what happens is when you do that, your brain starts to shift. Now, what I also know later after doing this is with, I studied with uh, the Dean of Psychology here at a local university about mindfulness, is that when you take the words from I will to I am, you are adding a, um, a connect, like a neural pathway in your brain that really takes on accountability and responsibility that leads you to that that feeling, just like we talked about before, the thoughts, the feelings, and then drives the action. So then your feeling is an I am that you've already it, um, became came that, you're already doing it. You're, that is who you are now. It's part of your, your um, fiber of your being. And that drives your actions for what's next. And so I really just started to dream of, and everything you can possibly imagine from all aspects of life, whether it was, you know, to vehicles, to what I was driving, to where I was living, to, um, you know, what careers I wanted, what I wanted in my professional life, my emotional life, my physical life. And to look back, again, you have to look back, right? You have to do some reflection and introspection to really see that um, evidence of, resilience, right? That strength that you have in there, those ideas that you once have that you can now tap into. And so I looked back and I was like, oh my gosh. So I then took those from a journal and wrote them on note cards. I hung them in my office and it wasn't until one day I was, and, and I just forget about them, right? Cause I'm in my office. They're all part of the wall. Now I just, they're, I don't even see them. So it's like almost like a vision board, right? Where people put vision boards up and then they forget about it. Well, I was cleaning my office uh, a while back and, and I saw those and I was like, wait, let me just sit back and look at this. And I was like, I'm now that 
I'm now that. I do that. I am now that. Oh my gosh. And I could almost like cross off or take down all of those, those note cards of what I now have achieved. And I really feel and believe um, with every fiber of my being that it was because I took those steps in journaling and really talking about, you know, or writing down where it is I want to go, what dreams do I have, and allow myself to dream and give myself permission to dream. Because if anyone has experienced an, uh, an abusive relationship, all you know is that. You have no idea anything outside of it. And so to be able to dream so much bigger than I could possibly imagine, and now to look at it and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe here we are uh, 12 years later, and I can now say, yeah, that's where I'm at. Well, do you think that even though you say that you put these things up on your wall and you didn't really look at them, but subconsciously they were there all the time and it was just, it was like, you know, something running in the back of your mind, but all the time not letting you forget that those things existed and that was what you were working towards. Uh, do you think that also, was that part of it you feel? Like if you yeah. wouldn't have had those on your wall, would the same thing have happened, do you think? Well, so do you, I don't know if you were a troublemaker, Josh. I mean, I know I was, so I don't know if you ever got in trouble, but if you Plenty. ever had, <laughs> if you ever got in trouble and had to write on the board, I will not spit spitballs at the teacher, you know, a million times or a hundred times or, you know, on a paper or whatever. There's I, something. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, yeah, like uh, it wasn't spitballs. I got busted for trying to pick school locks. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so and I yeah. had to write a whole bunch of times. See? So I hear you. There's a reason why they do that. And that is really creating the neural pathway, like you said, subconsciously, it is creating that neural pathway to allow that thing to happen. So instead of I will not, you know, that's what you're focusing on is I will not. And your brain starts to pick up, okay, I will not pick locks. I will not spit spitballs, you know, that type of thing. And so with my I am statements, I started to journal that on a daily basis as well. So that's another thing they could do in 30 days, right, is to start journaling their I am statements and really see where they're at from the beginning of 30 days and at the end and what they've accomplished or at least closer to that. Right. And I did this for years, years. And um for me, I've I am I have heard um, you know certain co coaches say that affirmations don't work, and I beg to differ because it literally changes your mindset when you have to change your mindset. And if you are stuck in your head, constantly thinking the negative, constantly thinking fear-based thoughts, then you have to get out of your head and into your heart. And the way you do that is like we, we've we been talking about the thoughts drive your, your feelings, your feelings drive your actions, your actions cause results. And so it's really about being able to shift how I felt, how I showed up in the world, how I felt about myself. Uh, and that was all subconscious. Um, but the, the statements themselves were conscious, but everything else was subconscious. Yep, yep. I, uh, I think, I think you're, you're spot on with that, with that idea. And I'm curious, right? Like, uh, with, you know, you talk about the, I am statements, give me a quick example because yeah. So for instance, um, take the thing that you said about wanting to say, maybe lose seven pounds over the next, you know, call it seven days. Yeah. Uh, instead of writing the goal, I want to lose seven pounds over the next yeah. seven days. What do you just say? I am going to lose seven pounds or I am losing seven pounds in seven days. How does it, how does so, it work? So let's say you want to weigh 150. So you just say, I am 150 pounds or I am fit. I am strong. I am toned, you know, whatever description that you can get around what the, the why of what that 50 pound or lose seven pounds in a day feels like what 150 pounds in your body would feel like. Right. So I am happy. I am, you know, energized. I am fulfilled. I am refueled, you know, whatever that looks like for you. It's really about tapping into, again, the feeling of 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 that particular thing. However, there are things like, for instance, I said I wanted to be a real estate investor. I wanted to um, be a, a CEO of 
And I didn't say I want, I said, I am an online business owner. I am a real estate investor. I am uh, an inventor. I am a CEO. And all of that has now happened. So I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it, it's and, and here's the thing, when you put a time limit on it, now everybody's gonna freak out and be like, oh, but smart goals, you have to have the time. Yes, you do, if that's what works for you. But when you have an attachment to that time and then the time comes and passes and you don't do that goal and you beat yourself up into a darker place, then guess what? That's not going to empower you to continue to work on it, right? You have to really like dive in deeper to figure out how can I let go of the attachment to that time? And it's really about one day, one day people are like, oh, that's a, that's a, airy fairy thing to say the one day dream but again if you do this enough times subconsciously your actions are literally going to start moving you in that direction we put this up scott uh, mason says powerful stuff and you. uh yes. and i agree and also lyndon she said uh um, you know that affirmations work when they create a powerful physical effect real time in your body you know, it becomes palpable. Uh, yes. Have you felt that? Oh, absolutely. It's uh, it's a difference between, okay, so let me back up. When you're in an abusive relationship, there are good days and then there are bad days that you don't even know if you're going to live by the end of the day, if you're gonna make it through the night, anything like that. So it is a very dark, deep, uh, depression isn't even the right word. Despair, I think, would be a better word to describe yeah. it, right? And to to then have this thing that you're like, I am a real estate investor. Never in a million years, when that despair, did I see that being a real estate investor would even be possible, right? But to just like focus on that one thing or all of your I am statements it brings you out of the despair and maybe you're just now depressed and upset. And then the next day, maybe you're just a little bit, you know, have a little bit more hope because that's really what these do is bring hope when you're hopeless. So it's not about mm -hmm. being a, uh, uh, a goal oriented person and everything's going to happen in my timeline and blah, 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 blah. It's really about at the, at the cellular level of who we are. It's really about bringing hope when hope less shows up. And just sort of like ratcheting yourself little by little day by day out of that yeah. feeling of desperation and depression. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It is powerful stuff, Shay. <laughs> you were rocking it. Let's talk real quick. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, let's talk a little bit about the book, yes. right? Yes. Fire yes. starters, right? Can we see the cover again? One yes, time? I would love to show you the cover let's this first time ever. How to be a spark of hope in the midst of change, right? Yes. So there you go. Yes, I mean, yes, there's yes. we're just talking about hope and yeah. uh, and finding that hope. So each one of the authors that are in this. Is it their own idea of what it's like to be that sort of hope or how does it how, how does it work? Yeah. So this particular one. So that's the that's the thing that um, just flowed to me when um, this idea was presented to me by my publishing coach. So thank you, Darren, for, for partnering with me. Um, it was just like, OK, so we are the change that we want to see. So how do you be the change you want to see? Right. And um, that's what's so amazing. So it's like people's stories have literally talk about the, the depths of whatever it is they were going through. And I have a chief master sergeant in the Air Force. I have a senior enlisted Air Force uh, uh, in the Air Force who's a senior enlisted officer in the Air Force who's about to be a chief master sergeant. I have a used to be a Navy veteran on a submarine. And now he's a life coach and a podcaster and I have a trauma coach and I have another podcaster who also makes woodworking 
and um, and then myself and you and another life coach and a speaker. And so we have all of this collective stories. So there's something for everyone, right? Everyone can relate in anyone's story, but it's really about, again, dives into that feeling of what does it look like when you are the change, when you show up to be the change, when you open that door of opportunity that presents itself and you walk through it, what does that look like? And so I had all these writing prompts that just came to me when I said, you know, let's do this. And these are the writing prompts and you guys take it from there. And they've each written just extraordinary, beautiful stories that I know, uh, you know, will inspire anyone, number one. But then the yeah. best part is, is that, you know, we're in this book together to really connect with any everybody that's in everybody's network. So it's a completely, you know, it's not about just being in this book and it's a one and done. No, it's about really connecting and creating this community of other fire starters. So then we can bring out the next collection, which, you know, we're, we're taking interviews for now. And that theme is called how to be fearless in pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. I like it. And then actually Lyndon asked that exact question. Oh, right? yes. Collection one implies that there will be more. Are you writing and participating in more? So yes. that's collection two is going to be all about, um, uh, I mean, all about what? Essentially, essentially how fear kind of grabs hold of you, kind of what you were talking about at the very beginning of the show and how it can yeah. hinder you or how to get yeah. rid of it, how to act, you know, in spite of fear. Spite of fear, absolutely, yeah. Yep. yep. And and at the same time, it's about you know, <laughs> some people. I will say, some people have a uh, a place that they work. We'll put it that way. Um, that they aren't motivated. They're not lit up every day to go to work. They're not excited. They're not enthusiastic. And so it's really about tapping into those people who have maybe figured out a secret, quote unquote, or maybe figured out a, um, a way that they can do their, their nine to five, but also create this other thing. Like, again, we have a woodworker. So he's like created this whole new business creating with his hands. Right. And that is what gets him excited. That's what leaps him out of bed every day. And yet how many people have shared that, um, you can't do that. You can't, you know, the, you can't make a living working with wood, selling your wood things. I mean, really, you know, how many people show up like that in your life that try to stop you? So it's really about tapping into yep. how do you continue yep. to go forward, even though you don't have anybody supporting you? Well, I mean, I feel like it comes down very much to what you were talking about uh, with evidence. Right, those people yes. have never have never gotten the evidence that it can actually be done, and that's right. also where I think that that a lot of the insights, because you focus so much on the military, right, you get a lot of evidence about what you're capable of when you're put into a like a military yeah. situation. So they yeah. just have that, you know, inherent. Yes. So I think it's Very fantastic. Good. Tell everybody a little bit about how they can connect with you, find out about the book, where do they get it, et cetera. Yeah, awesome. So if you go to firestartersbookproject.com, and that's firestarters with an S, firestartersbookproject.com, you can find out more about the next collection. So thank you, Lyndon, for asking that question. And you can ask, there's a place for email to, to email us and ask us more questions if you have more questions about it. We have a lot of information on the website to kind of go over what we're doing, but it also, and, and the value that you get for your investment of being in it, I mean, is absolutely incredible. And we get to, you know, meet people like you, Josh, who are doing such beautiful things in the world. So uh, there's, there's that information on the, on the website as well. And there is, uh, you can also reach me at, you know, all social medias, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Clubhouse now, uh, Shea Sparks. And we also have a Firestarters cl a club on Clubhouse. So, you know, check that out too. And we do a Monday nights uh, chat, Firestarter fire chat. And then um, you can also find 
um, what other things I do on um, my coaching and that type of thing and my other books at shaysparks.com. So many places, so many ways yes. to connect with you. You got a lot going on. Seriously, Shay, this has been so good. And I'm honored mm -hmm. that you were able to come onto the show and hang out with us for an hour. It's just been, it's just been awesome. So thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you. I, I just love you to pieces, Josh, and the work that you're doing. And you've created such an amazing platform for coaches everywhere. So I'm just thrilled to be on your platform as well. Well, thank you. I appreciate it so much. I uh, And just in true live show fashion, there's now people with uh, yard tools that I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but now they're coming, they're getting closer. Uh, so this is a perfect time to wrap it up. Shay, it has been such a fun time mm -hmm. with you. Uh, and to everybody who listened, who joined in, who commented, thank you so much. Catch us on another episode soon. Monday, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, we stream live. And, uh, and seriously, Shay, thanks for hanging out with Elvis and I. This has been so much fun. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Have a great day. That wraps it up. Shay, thanks again. And we'll see everybody later. Adios.